All right, let's take our Bibles this evening, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, we are looking at evangelism. The name of the sermon is Every Member Evangelism. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 uh, I meant to, while you're turning there, I'll just mention this. One of the songs we sang, in case you wondered why we sang that, uh, 1 Peter 1.8 says, talking about Jesus, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's where that phrase came from in that song that we, we sang tonight. Matthew chapter 9, I'm just going to read a few verses Uh, verse 35 through verse 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. When we think of evangelism, I think nowadays we, we often think of somebody like Billy Graham, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe that's too old for some of you, but uh, we think of a, of a person who goes out and preaches to, to great crowds. And in fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about uh, the gift of an evangelist. Uh, when it says he gave some apostles and prophets. You know, the Bible says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. It says, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and so on. There is a a gift, in a sense, to the church of those who are uh, are evangelists. My belief, or maybe you could say opinion, is the, the equivalent today would be missionaries those who go out and, and reach people to, to start churches. Uh, but we're, uh, we're talking tonight not so much about this position, not so much of somebody whose life's calling is to be an evangelist, but uh, similar to what uh, Paul wrote to Timothy when he talked to him about the ministry, and, and he said to, to him, um, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Now, Timothy wasn't called as an evangelist. He was a pastor. But uh, Paul said to him, do the work of an evangelist. And that's what we're talking about tonight is, we might call it witnessing, we might call it soul winning, uh, evangelism. Uh, It has to do with with taking the good news. It means an evangelist is one who proclaims the good news of salvation. And I think that's important to keep in mind. It's good news. (laughs) If a person will receive the gospel, it's good news. When somebody gets saved, they'll, they'll never criticize you for bringing the gospel to them. They'll thank you. Um, evangelism. Now, the question I want to put to you is, are we all meant to evangelize? And uh, we, we read here from Matthew chapter 9, and one of the things I think we sometimes forget is that Jesus was an evangelist. Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. As we read there in, in Matthew 9, 35, he went, he went preaching. Yeah, I don't know how you think of Jesus. Uh, most of us just kind of maybe think of that picture of that man's wife with a beard, you know. Uh, but uh, Jesus was a preacher. And that's one of the main things he did as he went from place to place. He preached. Uh, he spoke the gospel. He talked to people about, about, the coming, uh, about the kingdom of God. Let me show you some verses. We'll look at quite a few verses tonight. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17 a little bit repetitious, but that's all right. That's how you learn. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Dola said she startled the ladies uh, sit yesterday. Uh, did you say you stood up on your chair? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> I'll make it better than it was. You know? <laughs> stood on the table, I don't know. Uh, and uh, you know, called out like Jesus would have. You know, when you think of, of Jesus standing and saying, you know, he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You know, he, the Bible says he, he lifted up, he, he cried and, and said this. He, he, that means he shouted very loudly. He preached the gospel. Jesus was an evangelist. 
Uh, we read Matthew 9, 35, uh, uh, Matthew 11, 1. Uh, came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Uh, it was what Jesus did. You, you can see it in, in all the Gospels. I'll, I'll give you a couple. Uh, Mark 1, verses 38 and 39. Mark 1, verse 38. He said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. He says, this, this is why I'm here. I came to preach. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Uh, in Luke uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 43. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. He said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of, of Galilee. That, that verse made me think of the, one of the song we sang. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. You know, that's from John 20, verse 21, the last song that we sang. Um, Jesus came to preach the gospel. God sent him to be the gospel. And he says, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Uh, Jesus came to preach. In, in the book of John, he often uses the term bear witness. Let me give you one verse here, Acts, uh, Acts. John 18, John 18, verse 37. This is when Jesus is being tried. He's before Pilate. John 18, 37, he, he says to Pilate, I'm just, just going to read part of the verse, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Jesus says, that's why I came, was to, to bear witness. That term, bear witness, is often used in the book of John. I, I think I counted over 30 times uh, that it's used. Now, they're not all referring to Jesus, but uh, Jesus evangelized. And Jesus told his disciples to evangelize. You know, like, like we sang, as the Father sent me, even so send I you, he said to them. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7, uh, there's quite a few of these where Jesus sends them out to preach and to minister. Uh, Matthew 10 and verse 7 is just, just one. In, in chapter 10, he, he calls them together and, and uh, gets them organized. And uh, he, verse 5, he, he commands them, go, uh, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Verse 6, go to the lost sheep of Israel. Verse 7, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So first he sends them to the Jews. Then later on he sends them to everybody, uh, and so on. Um, Jesus told his disciples to evangelize. Now, is this same pattern continuing today? You know, Jesus evangelized. He had his disciples evangelize. You know, I think some people look at that and they say, oh, well, you know, of course they did it. That's Jesus. You know, that's, that's Peter and that's John. And of course they would do it. We don't have to do that. I mean, we're not disciples. Well, are we? Isn't it interesting what we call ourselves? Uh, the, the Bible talks about in Acts chapter uh, 6 and verse 7. I'm just thinking about this this afternoon, uh, the titles that we use. Acts chapter 6 and, and verse 7 says, The word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Well, who are they talking about? You know, in our day, we might call ourselves Christians. But you know, there was a time before Christians were called Christians. <laughs> in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, I just read the last, last part of the verse. It says, they, the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. This is quite a ways down the track. And I'm, I'm told that that was actually a term of derision. Oh, those Christians, those little Jesus people, you know. Uh, before that, we were called disciples. And uh, that's who we are. That's who we should be. Not just a, a label, but a description of who we are. Followers of, of Jesus Christ. And, and I believe when we, when we look at this thing of, uh, of evangelism, the pattern continues with us. Uh, yes, 
The Great Commission is for us. You know, when Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, it wasn't just for those however many people he was talking to at that time. Now, that's why he wrote it down. It's for us too. Uh, go ye into all the world. You know, Mark 16, 15 there. Uh, in Mark as well, uh, look there if you've if you got time to get there. Mark 16, uh, verse 15 is where he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, verse 19 says, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. You know, Acts records that, how he ascended. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Everywhere they went, they shared the gospel. You know, as the, the more I, I looked at this, the more I realized that was just the norm. Wherever they went, they preached the gospel. You know, if they went to the market, they talked to somebody about the gospel. If they were getting their tooth worked on, they talked to them about the gospel. <laughs> now, maybe they didn't do that, I don't know. Uh, well, Paul was in prison, of course. We know that. You know, he talked to people about the gospel. Um, and you see it right through the book of Acts. Go to uh, Acts chapter 5 and, and verse 42. Now, maybe I'm preaching to the choir tonight. You know, uh, hopefully we're already all persuaded of this. But I think it's good to remind ourselves sometimes of these truths. Acts chapter 5 and verse 42. And, and let me say this. Let me give credit where credit is due. Uh, this is a sermon I heard my son preach. I have two sons. One lives here. One lives in America. He's a pastor there. And uh, I thought I'd heard him preach it in person, but his wife had sent us a DVD. <laughs> so I hadn't actually seen him preach it in person. I, I watched the DVD and uh, I took some notes and I thought that'll make a good sermon. Uh, so I wanted to, to share this with you tonight. Acts chapter 5 verse 42, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now, later on in Acts chapter 4, Eight and uh, verse 4, if you know the Christian story, you know that there be began to rise up persecution against them. And it says, um, Acts chapter 8, 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. As they were persecuted, they, they sometimes had to flee for their lives. And they were fleeing for their lives because they were Christians and preaching the gospel. And they kept being Christians and preaching the gospel. <laughs> it was just the norm. Verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And uh, you know, people had a wonderful response. Verse 12, When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the, the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, uh, both men and women. And what a blessing it was. Uh, verse 14, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria... Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. They're listening to the preaching. Let's preach some more. <laughs> Let's send some more preachers. Uh, verse 25. They, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. On the way there and on the way back, they preached. Uh, verse 40. And Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Uh, this looks like a pattern to me. Uh, this was just what, what they did. They talked to people about Jesus. Uh, now, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, of verses that we could look at here. Uh, let's look at one more. Uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 27. This is about Saul when he first gets saved. Or Paul. Barnabas took him, that's Saul, and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way that he'd spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in, in and going out at Jerusalem, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this is Saul when he's first saved. The first thing he does, he talks to people about, about the Lord. In uh, Romans chapter 10, take a look there. Romans chapter 10, uh, chapter 9 and 10, we often use as uh, verses that we present to people about salvation. And then in Romans 10, verse 14, and right after he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Folks, you know a lot of people like that. 
There's a lot of people who the only thing they know about Christianity is what they've seen on TV. <laughs> I don't know if you've watched any movies lately, but usually the preacher's the bad guy in the movies nowadays. <laughs> uh, they, they know nothing about it. They think they do, but they don't. He says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of, of good things. That word preach means to herald. Do you know the word herald? It's the guy that you know, calls out before TV and... and uh, email and all that stuff, and people just came out and yelled the news, you know. Now, that's what we're to be, to proclaim it. The pattern does continue today. Now, Jesus was an evangelist. He calls his, his uh, apostles to be evangelists, and the pattern continues for us. God has given us uh, the call of the Great Commission. It's for every Christian. Go ye into all the world and, and preach the gospel. Well, what does it mean uh, to evangelize. Uh, like I said before, to evangelize is to bring the good news. Uh, it, it's the, the news of the gospel that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. Uh, good news. And one of the things it talks about here, to evangelize is to be sent. God has said, go. Go ye into all the world. And uh, here he, he says in Romans 10, 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? Listen, the reason we go is because we have a message. Do you remember the story in the Old Testament where the, the, the guy had an important message? And the other guy said, let me go too, let me go too, let me go too. And so he went and he ran and he got there and he had no message. <laughs> he said, oh, stand over here. <laughs> Wait for the other guy. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there's, there's people running around the world saying things that have no message. Uh, you know, communism has basically taken the method of Christianity and done a lot of damage to our world. What do they call their group? Cells. You know, they started cells all over the place and trying to influence people for communism. Listen, God tells us to take the message. We have a message. We've been sent. And we need to go. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world uh, to preach the gospel. And let me say this. The world has taken this term and made it a bad term. The world takes the word preach, and that's a bad thing. Don't, you know, you'll hear, don't you preach to me. Well, listen, the Bible says it's by the foolishness of preaching that people will be saved. The devil loves to make good words bad words, and bad words good words, if, I, if that makes sense. Um, we're sent. Uh, an evangelist is one who's sent. An evangelist as well is someone who, did, who does what Jesus did. Uh, we read that verse in John 18, where Jesus was speaking to Pilate, and he, he said to him that he was there to bear witness. For this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And you know, we often talk about wanting to be like Jesus. Well, here's a way we can be like Jesus. Just bear witness to the truth. You know, we, we don't have to have a lot of smart things to say. We don't have to have, you know, fancy methods and, and so on. We just need to tell people the truth. And the truth is very simple. Um, bear witness, like I said, it's used over 30 times in the Gospel of John. I found it interesting that the Greek word is, is the, basically the word martyr. Do you know the word martyr? That's people who die for Jesus. Um, uh, we're to bear witness. We're to be a martyr for Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean that necessarily people are going to kill us. It means that we're not to hold back. Give testimony. Don't hold back. A, a martyr is one who gives their life. They don't hold their life dear to themselves. Uh, we're to give testimony. And that just means uh, to tell people what Jesus said and did. More specifically, to tell people what Jesus did for you. you know, a, a person can argue with a lot of things, but they can't argue with your testimony. This is what Jesus did for me. Uh, you remember the man in, in, in the Gospels where Jesus had healed his blindness? And the Pharisees were saying, oh, you need to say that, that this Jesus is a, a bad man, you know, and so on. He said, well, I, I don't know about that. He said, I, here's, here's what I know. I used to be blind. Now I can see. <laughs> whether, whether he's bad or not, you work that out. I used to be blind. Now I can see. Listen, you can't argue with that. And our testimony, our witness is, is important. We need to have one. And we need to share uh, what God has done, done for us. 
Uh, to bear witness also has to do with acknowledging. It's almost the same thing, but uh, often Jesus would call on people to affirm what they'd seen and, and heard. Um, John the Baptist, for instance, in John uh, 3 and verse 28, said to the people, Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ. So he, he wanted them to affirm, this is what I said. Uh, Jesus, in uh, John 12 and, and verse 17, said, make sure you got the right chapter here. The people, therefore, that uh, was with him when, they, when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. Jesus just wanted them to aff affirm what had happened. And there was people who had seen it happen. They said, yep, that's what we saw. They, they bore witness. Well, how can we bear witness? How can we evangelize? How can we witness for, for the Lord? I'm going to start here, and you, you can uh, make, make of this whatever you want, but uh, one of the things that's important to our witness is how we live. Uh, our lives and actions. Uh, there's a song we used to sing, What you are speaks so loud that the world can't hear what you say. Listen, if you live in an ungodly way, and then try to talk to people about the Lord, it's going to be very hard for them to listen to you. Now, an ungodly person can still share the truth. Uh, we've known people who've gotten saved by the witness of someone who probably wasn't even saved. <laughs> we, we know people who a family member has brought them to church, and then that other family member has gone off and back into the world. Uh, but we need to understand our lives and actions do make a difference as to whether people will, will listen to us or not. Um, they, they used to talk, I haven't heard the term much lately, they used to talk about lifestyle evangelism. Well, it's true. We need to have a Christian lifestyle. But that's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough just to live a godly life. Uh, we also have to say things, but it's important for us to live for the Lord. Uh, when, when they called the first uh, deacons, they looked for men who were living for the Lord. Look out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Uh, in um, Acts chapter 4 and, and verse 13, when uh, the disciples were witnessing, it says, When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, they had a, a life that was changed. One of the greatest witnesses to people is folks who, when they trust Christ, there's a change. We had a man in our church who, he'd been kind of an unkind, hard man. And when he got saved, he changed. He was an elderly man. He was probably in his 80s. Yeah, I think he was in his late 70s or 80s. And in his senior citizens club, people saw a change. And man, we had many people came to church and several got saved because they saw something's changed in Stan's life. <laughs> uh, he's not saying those mean things he used to say. He's not being the unkind man he, he used to be. Uh, we bear witness by our life. Uh, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and, and verse 10, it talks about the widows. Uh, the widows in the church. And, and it says that they, they need to have a, a life that reflects Christ. Um, let not a, verse 9, let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man. And it says, well reported of for good works. If she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she have re relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. Just saying, uh, she needs to have been a, a good and godly disciple of, of Christ. I, I read a story some time ago. I, I'm not sure if I have the name right. It was a true story about a man who had been under communism. I believe it was in Bulgaria. He had worked for the government, and his job was to go and break up Christian churches. When they found out that somebody was secretly meeting, he and a bunch of other bully boys would go and just beat the tar out of them uh, with the idea that that'll, that'll sort them out. Well, he said he went to, to one meeting, and, and one of the people he beat was a beautiful young woman. 
And he said he, he spanked her so hard and long that she bled. And uh, he thought, you know, we'll never see her again. Well, the, the next church he was at to break up, there she was again. And to cut a long story short, it set things in action in his life that here was a person who really believed in the Lord. And he eventually became a, a Christian himself. Um, you know, our life says things. Uh, how we live uh, in our lives and actions, it's important that we live for the Lord. But you know, as well, it's important that we say the words, that we talk to people about the Lord. Acts chapter 23 and, and verse 11, uh, there's a lot of verses on, on this, but uh, Acts 23 verse, verse 11 uh, the Lord uh, stood by, by him, Paul, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about what Paul said. Paul talked to people about the Lord. Paul preached about the Lord. Uh, Paul testified and bore witness uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, our words, th there needs to be times when we talk to people about the Lord. Acts 26, verse 22. Paul is talking to King Agrippa. He says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. That's the gospel. He's preaching. He's talking. He has an opportunity. He's a prisoner. <laughs> He's appearing before the king, and he uses it to share the gospel. Uh, in our words, and in particular, we need to bear witness by using God's word. Uh, look, for instance, at John chapter 5 and, and verse 36. You know, bearing witness is more than just our life. It's more than just words. It, it needs to include God's words. Uh, this is why we memorize Scripture. This is why we study Scripture and so on. John chapter 5, verse 36. Jesus is speaking. He says, I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. You've neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And you, you have not his word abiding in you, for... Whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, now the people he was talking to weren't listening to the Lord. They said, he said, God spoke and you, you've not listened to him. But he said, search the scriptures. They're testifying of me. Uh, the Bible tells us that people are saved by the word of God. Listen, people aren't saved by our words. We can't save somebody. Yeah, sometimes we'll use that expression. Oh, that's Pastor So-and-so. He saved me. <laughs> well, no, Pastor So-and-so didn't save you. Only the Lord can save you. Uh, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, in Peter, 1 Peter 1 and, and verse 23, he says, we're born again by the word of God. Uh, let, let me read the, the whole scripture to you. 1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. If a person's going to be born again, it's by faith in God through his word. So important. We can bear witness. Jesus said, I came to bear witness. God calls us. God's pattern, I believe, is for every member evangelism. It's not just for those who are gifted. Now, let's be honest. There are some people who are just good at talking. I mean, whether they're Christians or not, they're going to be talking. Uh, you know, they're, they're talking their sleep, I guess. I don't know. Now, there's other, others of us who, you know, we struggle to talk. But, uh, you know, the question is not, will I be effective? The question is, will I be obedient? That's the key. Uh, not everybody is going to be a natural at, at talking to people. And by the way, not everybody is going to respond to someone who is a talker. You know, they go, yeah, yeah, you know, they're always talking. But sometimes it's just that person with just a few words and, and a testimony of life uh, that can, can point them in the right direction. Uh, it's not just full-time workers who do it. 
And let me say, we don't hire somebody to do evangelism for us, all right? Uh, you know, there's no hired guns kind of a thing. Uh, this is for all of us to, to participate in. Uh, you might think, well, I'm not good enough. Listen, that's one of the main weapons Satan will use to keep you from being an evangelist and a witness. Oh, I'm not good enough. Listen, sinners are reached by sinners. Uh, you need to know where you came from in order to reach people. Uh, someone said it's, it's one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. <laughs> uh, listen, we, we, there's nothing to boast of in ourselves. We're not presenting ourselves. We're presenting Christ Jesus the Lord. Uh, you'll never be good enough. Neither will I. Well, what can we do? Let me just give you some, some very simple practical things. Here's a revolutionary thought. Talk to people. Ask the question, are you saved? I, I sometimes ask people, are you a Christian, to see if they're not Buddhist or Muslim or <laughs> you know, something like that. But listen, asking somebody if they're a Christian is not a very good way to find out if they're a disciple of Christ. Um, most people in Australia will say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Um, ask the question, are you saved? And, and if you get uh, more, more opportunity, Ask him, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Or uh, if you were to stand before God and God were to say, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? There's lots of questions uh, you can ask, but talk to people. Um, invite people to church and church activities. That's why we have some of these things. Uh, we want to give people the opportunity to hear the gospel. You know, there's folks who will come to a dinner. Uh, there's folks who will come at Christmas and Easter. Listen, if they only come that once and get saved, we're glad. Uh, we're happy that they, that they come. Uh, we don't resent people who only come once in a while. Uh, invite people along and, and be faithful yourself. I, I've seen it happen where people have invited folks to come and then that person comes and they're not there. And they look around and say, oh, well, it's not very important to them. Uh, be consistent. Live for Jesus. You know, when you think about living for Jesus, uh, that includes things like character, you know, honesty, at work and school, uh, hard work, you know, kindness, forgiveness, uh, being faithful in church yourself. I think it's important as Christians that when the opportunity comes up that we verbally identify with godliness and that we verbally uh, stand against evil. Now, I've often said it, if somebody else said it first, uh, Sometimes silence is golden, but sometimes it's just yellow. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's times when we need, we need to just speak up and, and let people know where, where we stand. Uh, one group talks about planned acts of Christian kindness. Sometimes that'll just, just doing something nice for somebody will give you an opportunity to be a blessing to them and share the gospel. Uh, you know, going out of your way for somebody physically, helping them. Uh, and let them know you're doing it because uh, of God's love for you. And let me add this, when you're trying to talk to people about Jesus, listen, we can't argue people into heaven. We can't badger them into heaven. Um, I've known of people who said, I finally just prayed because he wouldn't quit talking, and uh, just to get him to go away. Uh, listen, that's not what we want. We want to see the work of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. And, and we don't want people just to pray a false prayer just to get rid of this. It's almost like inoculating them against the gospel. Be, be careful with that. Uh, look for the work of the Holy, Holy Spirit and use God's word. Listen, it's not going to be our arguments or our words. Uh, I, I often carry a, uh, this track. I try to keep this with me all the time. God's bridge to eternal life. Now, there's lots of different ones you can use. I like this because it has pictures. And I find that with the Bible verses and with the things that are there, it's got a lot of things that I can share with, with someone. Use God's Word. Memorize Scripture. You won't always have something in your hand. Carry a Bible. They used to challenge kids when, when we were teenagers to carry your Bible to school. Put, put your Bible right on top of your books. Now, I don't even know if they have books at school now. Uh, but uh, you know, put your Bible on top of that, your tablet or you know, whatever it is. And carry. Just see what kind of a reaction you get. Uh, carry gospel tracks. I, I set my, my, my wallet down here. I always carry a, a, gospel, a couple of gospel tracks in my wallet, our church tract. Um, use, we, we have a bunch of these, John and Romans. 
several different versions of them. Uh, they're, they're all the same. There are two books of the Bible. It's a marked edition where a person can, can see page 42. And you can go to page 42, and then it takes you to another page and to another page, and, and it shows a person the gospel. Uh, there's just all kinds of tools, but the key is we've got to use God's Word. Whether it's printed, whether it's memorized, uh, you know, whatever, however we do it. And, and be careful that you don't let shame or fear stop you. You know, there's some things in life we should be ashamed of, but sharing the gospel is not one of them. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 is where we were this morning, and uh, we ended up with verse 7. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The next verse says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. What's that holy calling? It's to share the gospel with others and to live for, for Christ. Uh, and let me just say this on a very practical level. Plan on it. <laughs> just, just plan on sharing the gospel, uh, in, in evangelizing in, in some way. I think the reason many Christians never witness or evangelize is they never plan on it. Uh, we were taught the worst plan is better than none. <laughs> uh, listen, when you, when you try to talk to people about the Lord, you'll have times when you'll say the wrong thing or uh, you know, you'll, you'll make mistakes. But that's all right. Uh, do the best you can and, and trust the Lord to help you. Uh, just plan on, on doing something. Now, this is, this is a very simple uh, thing we're doing, putting out pamphlets. That's not really evangelism in the, in the truest sense of the word. We're not actually talking to people. But we've had a few people visit. And we, I'm, hopefully, many people have read the gospel tracts. And who knows what, what God might do with that. And it gives us opportunities. Uh, but we need to, to understand evangelism is not just something for special people in special places. It's for each one of us. Our pastor, when we were first married, used to say, I've gone further under the house than some of you have gone soul winning. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's true. Uh, some people just have never planned to go, and so they never have. And, and they've, never, they've never put a tract in their pocket and thought, today I'm going to share this with somebody. Uh, just just try, try to do something for the Lord. Uh, there's folks you know who you're the main Christian they know. And I remember one fellow who came to church. Uh, he knew a lady that was attending our church. And he said, I kept hoping she'd invite me. <laughs> and she finally did, or maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, you know, there's some people who, who would just like you to talk to, to them about the Lord. There's others who really would hate it if you talked to them about the Lord. But they just might get saved anyway. Uh, we can't go by their faces. Uh, we've got to go by obedience to the Lord. God help us to be like Jesus. God help us to obey the Lord and, and to bear witness. Uh, what a blessing it will be to those who hear. I thought we would uh, conclude tonight with page 108 in our hymnal. It's the song, I'll Go Where You Want Me to Go. And I'd like us to use this song both as a prayer and a promise. As, as we sing it, I'd like you to really seriously uh, sing this for the Lord. I'll go where you want me to go. Uh, page 108, why don't... Uh, Neville, why don't you come and lead us in some of these verses? <laughs> 